Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, massive uh, Aussie uh, Aussie Opens uh, slate. Um, and I'm not going to do that many tennis uh, videos unless you know people really get into them. Um, if if you come and say that you really like them, and and uh, I should do more, then I'd be more than happy to do more if I have time. But this is kind of a unique slate in that, well, several things. Number one, it's a it's a it's a hundred, it's a billion matches. It's a billion matches, and it's a huge prize pool. This is not usually what you're gonna get from tennis. You're usually gonna get five or ten thousand at most for first, but they decided to fire it tonight in a full DGen uh Tuesday mode. Um so um I think it's like fifty thousand for first. So it may as well do shouldn't say a slate preview because quite honestly, I don't have much kind of internal comments on any of these players. All I can show you is the process that I'm going to be using that I think you can use to build good lineups to do well in tennis DFS in general, which happens to apply to tonight. There are a couple of differences, I guess, but we're going to just do this the same way that we do the hockey videos. Um, I'm going to just, show you my sheets which are usually only available for true dfs subs uh, premium subscribers and then we are going to try to build lineup by hand and then we are going to build multiple lineups using sabers and there's one kind of caveat that i will give you given the size of this slate that we'll get to i guess at the end but first thing i, I will note is that you know in a slate like this with like what do we have 70 35 matches or something like that 30 matches ownership is not going to be that big of a deal. I don't think, I think people are going to get a whole bunch of combinations here and it really just comes down to like a stock pickers market, so to speak, you know, wh whoever just can, can, can come up with the most fantasy points is going to win. And I know that sounds kind of juvenile to say that because that's the same as every slate, but I just don't, I just don't think that the ownership projections are going to be particularly good for openers. And I just don't think that you should be worried about them too much. You know, just pick, just pick the guys you like, pick the girls you like. Don't really, don't worry about ownership on a slate like this. Um, the, the, you're, ju you're just going to just have to just, I don't know. I don't want to out project people, but just kind of, you know, just, I guess that was a get lucky, but listen, you have to rely on the tools at your disposal. I happen to think that we have the best projections available because I basically combine the industry and I don't just combine them. I actually back tested these for accuracy. So, so I actually do have a little bit of an edge over anybody that would even just average them all. So this is a little bit different. Um, and we're going to use Saberson to build some of these to hopefully get some ownership fade, presuming these ownership uh, projections are okay. I, I give the ownership projections on a day like this, maybe about a, a uh, reliability of a four as opposed to 10. You know, the, the smaller the slate, the more likely you know where everybody's going here. People are just firing, you know, uh, not to mention it's a huge prize pool. So people, God knows what people are playing, you know. So I would just really just rely on the projections, build some lineups and have some fun, uh, which is what we're going to do right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my my uh, the true DFS projections here. And as I mentioned, this is a good com compilation of what the industry is looking at. And the industry takes into account all the stuff, you know, the, the win odds, the, the aces, the double faults, the, the, the straight set odds, all the stuff. And we have the projections here and we list them in order of projections, but we could also do it by points per dollar. But today we're just going to use sheets value score, which is my own way of, of identifying value, which combines both point per dollar and salary and fantasy points um, in, in, I think, a, a more intelligent way. And you see the ownership over here on the right. I mean, this is like a perfect example. Like everybody's this. I shouldn't say that. The top guys I have are actually a little higher owned than the others. I will say that. But I don't think, I don't know. What do I know? But I, I don't think you're going to get a huge amount of chalk on anybody here. So we're just going to go with this. And the first thing I'd like to look at um, when it comes to analyzing tennis by hand you just stare back for a second, stand back and say, okay, we're listing these guys by Sheets value score. Who's cheap that's up here, okay? The Sheets value score does, you know, favor the, the high-priced guys somewhat. Um, 
So who's cheap? Another way you could do it is you could do the opposite. You could sort by points per dollar and see who's expensive. Okay. So if you're a good value and you also have a big salary, that's really good. So you'll, what you'll see is that the top two guys appear in both screens, uh, uh, Hercotch and Neokosha. They're top two, whether you rate them by point per dollar or by um, seats value score. So these two are really who should be you should be starting your lineups. I think. So let's do that. Let's put them in just just for fun. So we'll put in Hercotch, and then we'll put in uh, Nishoka. And again, if you think these guys are gonna be chalky, okay. But you know what? So then then make some change in the rest of your lineups. You know, this is this is really where I would start. Like you talked about a core. This would be my core. Um, and then the next best guys, let's do it again by Sheets Value Score. Who's the who's another cheapo we could play here? Well, I think if you start playing Keys or Corda, you might end up running out of money, but let's let's try it anyway. Let's put Corda in and see what we have left. Corda? I don't know. It's 7,600 left. I mean, you could do this pretty easily, actually. So who else is somewhat cheap? Let's go down here. Harris is good. Maria's good. If you want, put those two in and you're done. You know? And and believe it or not, I mean, it's not the, exactly the worst way to play DFS tennis. I mean, I can think of much worse way, ways to play. Um, Harris appears up over here, which is good. Bronzetti, is that what we said? Maria, who's the other one that we said that was 73? There was Bronzetti, Uskovic, who, by the way, is, is going up against Harris. Make sure you don't, you know, don't make that mistake and play two guys against each other. So Harris, Tatiana Maria, Uskovic, these guys, um, all these, I think, make for good hand-built lineups. Um, so on a slate like this, I would really just rely on the true DFS or your own projections, whatever, and, and really not try to get fans. Um Okay, on the other hand, let's see if you want to build multiple lineups and you wanted to use Saberson. All right, so we'll go into Saberson. We'll go into tennis. Boom. And it's the same thing as any other sport, really. Uh, here's like the one difference. So we'll do the same thing. We'll upload the sheets, and I'm going to change these a little, a little later. Upload them here. It has the ownership. We'll play, uh, we'll use 150 max, so we're hopefully going to get a decent amount of randomness here. Let's build like 150 lineups. And then we'll take a look and see what it gives us. The one thing that I, I don't want to say criticized, I think Saberson builds, this is my own opinion, too many stars and scrubs lineups in tennis, um, especially on the big slates. You know, if you're on a small slate, you can play these stars and scrubsy lineups because the, the raw points are so important from these big guys that you can almost get away with a loss sometimes. But I don't think the difference on a big slate between an 11 K guy and a 10 K guy is enough to justify like dumpster diving with like say McDonald, like look at McDonald. Um, I'm not, I mean, who want, I mean, it's not winning. I mean, she's not going to be Nadal in the first round, you know, it's not going to do it. Um, now, I know it's 2% owned, so if it does, but even if it wins, you don't guarantee anything. So um, what I would probably do is X out guys with – I mean, you could do it a couple of different ways. If you want to be really, really, really funky, you could go into the into the raw data here. Like, um, I mean, you'd have to get a you know, projection model to do this, but you could X out guys that have, you know uh, – match win odds of less than say 20 percent if you wanted you could x those out from your player pool but if you wanted to you know um do it from here you just not you can just x out guys at 6400 or something like that or under 5k and i think it's actually pretty reasonable um so what you'd be getting here is actually the same guys hercotch uh, Nishoka, like the same guys we talked about. Um, but this sprinkles in like, you know, it's a couple of low-owned hoodoos to make your lineups maybe a little bit more different. 
But as I mentioned, this is a slate where getting different is not going to be that difficult. You just build lineups and, and just, you know, hope you get there. Anyway, I hate, I hate to make it sound so so uh, so trivial. Um, hey, throw in your lineups, hope you get lucky. But on this type of slate, there's, n there's not a lot of subtlety. Um, I will say this again. Consider doing what I said and erring towards the side of a more middling build. Aside from that, I mean, just go with the projections, play who you like, and just roll. And hopefully we get lucky and we get a sweat for the 50K. Um, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.